your backyard nothing more than a reason to own a lawnmower? If so, we'll show you how to turn that expansive grass into a comfy hideaway with the help of some garden architecture. Hmm. Thank you so much. Put your clown in. You got the map? Yeah, I got the map. It's the same map we've been using for the past two and a half hours. Check the map. This is. Now let's study this map. We found it. Like I said. <laughs> hey, I'm Ed Feldman. And I'm Joe Lorario. And today's show is devoted to garden architecture. I love doing a garden architecture show. <laughs> what a great show for your health. Ow. Look, see bugs too. We're in West Mount Airy, Philadelphia, at the lovely summer estate of Nikki Tutone, the mad Hungarian. And the house is a French-style house, it isn't is. it? Yeah, well, it was designed by Jerry Louis. You are a liar. It was designed around the turn of the century by an American, designed on a Norman kind of architecture plan. But it's also got an English garden up there. It does, and we had just had some tea. We were waiting for, for the, the English, English rain. rain. Go, go and of, you. of course, English gardens are very ordered, because because the English like things ordered. Ties, regiments. India. Yeah. Shame about India, isn't it? But back here we have a more rustic setting, sort of a hideaway when you want to just be there with that special someone and look up and say, eh, there's a bird right there. Ow. Uh, that bird. Yeah, so we're going to put in an arbor here. And we have dug four holes 30 inches deep. Hey, well, we didn't. Who did? Oh, Teddy Pendergrass He's, was here. He lit a candle. <laughs> ho, ho. So, so let's go look wait, at Wait, the... we're also going to be doing something else today. I was just going to say, a trellis. We're going to be building a trellis up against the house to encourage growth of climbing plants. Lots of bugs and spiders and all that kind of stuff. Don't worry, it's outside. Let's go. I'm gonna lift this up. Yes. Look, I am now in Sing Sing. <laughs> Five years in the Hanoi Hilton. They still don't send me cards. Hey, this is the back to the arbor that we're gonna be building. And it was built by Brian Foster, Garden Architecture. He's That's a designer. That's not his whole name. His name is Brian Foster. And he's a designer and he's a builder and he gave this to us to build. Now over there. And it's all made out of cedar. Did going we say that? right to left or your left to right, we've got the sides to the arbor. We got the uh, beams, the rafters, and a bench. Right. You're going to have a bench. It's integrated. And it's all screwed Unlike together. America. Screwed together, no nails. Right, absolutely not. But here's the tools like this that, we, show. that we too, we do need. We need a big level. A big level. You could use a small level, but a big level's best. You need a drill. You need a spade. And you need a post hole digger. And thank goodness we already. That's what we are, post hole diggers. We dug the post holes already, so now we're going to erect. Hey, it's a 30-inch hole. See the tape right to the top of the hole. We dug down 30 inches. Well, somebody did. We're stars. But uh, we're not going to pour footings of course made out not. of concrete it's in Ridiculous, because then it would be here permanent. And if you moved and you wanted to take it, you wouldn't be able to. You never know who's going to want to do anything to your house after you leave. I know I've built a large bunker on top with a gun in placement. So we're not going to put any kind of uh, concrete in here. We're going to we, use feta cheese. No, that's... Um, thank I've been, you. I've been no, eating I, it. It's really no, good. No, Greek was Saturday night. Uh, we're going to fill it with gravel. Gravel, and See that's that? what this is. This is gravel. So, since it's a 30-inch hole, and the um, the posts at the bottom of the sides of the arbors are about two foot, about two nine, two nine, that is going to allow our seat height integral in the structure at 18, which is perfect. So it'll be a but perfect to carry height, perfect height, just like this here. Next step, attack See, back. I can of, do the dance. You could, yeah, but, but uh, then you'd break your way. End of the show, maybe. We're going to attach the back to the sides right now. Like, what do you call? Let's attach to the what do you call here. Oh, you know, later we're going to have our country cousins come and help us. Oh, yeah, us. Ezekiel and Amos are going to be here. Yes, you know, I'm Amos on my mother-in-law's side. And, and I'm Ezekiel on somebody's side. There we go. Now you hold that up. And we'll flip this up. And see these notches cut out? Some people call these dados. Buenos notches. And these will fit right in there, and we get our galvanized deck screws, galvanized Y. Hey, I have. Oh. Because that way they do not rust. All right. Sink this, it in. This is called what happens in my agent's office. Take thy hands off that arbor. That's our job. He don't say. Here they come. Amos and Zeke. Let's get out of here. Let them do this. They're specialists. Yeah. Well, Are they related to you or me? They're my, my mother's sister's aunt's brother's side, I think. Out. Take your I, gun. They don't I use know, them. I know, I know. I 
anti-boss threads, by the way. Oh, thank you. Versace. These should go with the unreconstructed look. After this, the English will continue. Steady tuned. D has cable? Zeke and Amos. A couple of wild guys. Ready to put in the ladder. They're back there calling their service. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the ladder, this it's is not. the bench. And it's beautifully notched out at the back so it fits right into the arbor. And we also have a couple of holes Craftsman. for the screws. One, those that angled screw hole. I can is, see it. Is for the actual screw that uh, holds the sides and the back together on the bench. And this straight in screw, that's for screwing into the back of the arbor itself. Are so, we done with all the technical? Yeah, I know. Let's Screwing put the bench in back now. and all this stuff. Let's place it all the way at the back. Yeah. All the way back in there. Oh, it's, it fits flush it's and perfect. perfect. Screw that into the back the there magic. with the galvanized screws, of course. Up underneath? Up under the knee. Up under there, up in there. It's peaceful here, and it's time to put up the beams. This is a beam. It's going to run front to back on the arbor. That's and a of beam. Course, the rafters are going to run across. Rafter man. Yeah, you got it, buddy. And see how it's uh, decorative here? Well, we've got some notches on the front and the back of these side pieces, and it's going to rest right there. Now, from front to back here, 30 inches. Beam, 62 inches. 62. 30, take away from 62, is 32. Half of that, 16. So we're going to. We're going to attach it 16 inches from the front and 16 inches from the back. I drew my little notch with my flat pencil, of course. And now. You need this? Yeah. You need me to hold that? Yeah. Hey, I and need I get, lo longer arms or bigger shoes. Get some more galvanized uh, screws and right into the pre drilled holes. Galvanized screws. Is that like. One in the front. That's enough. All right, one in the back, too, then. Why not? Actually, two in the front and two in the back. Here's the other ramp. Oh. Gently, huh? OK, all right. If that had been a big 2 by 12 I'd have been on the ground. Now, let's put this other screw in here and a gun. Can we put the grapes up yet? The grapes of Roth. Say ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Uh, he's talking hard press now, you ain't. But you know, we're putting in the rafter man. The rafters, man. And how are we doing it? We're doing it with two inch galvanized screws, always galvanized, and we're doing it at an angle. Actually, we made a mark so we have an equal amount of overhang on each side. And we've also measured in between the rafters so that we're putting in four and they're equidistant from each other. Now, since this is soft wood, watch it countersink itself. It's amazing. Nothing from Ronco needed. Oh, did too good a job. The hand is stuck now. Now, for this rafter, I'll sink one on the opposite side, toenailing or screwing as I go. Your brother was just here. Really? I've been looking for him. Says you, Einar. Says me, Ragnar. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I need that. I gotta go up the ladder now to put in the slats. I forgot. See, this is a slat. And this piece is gonna go up here. And what it's gonna do? It's gonna support Ivy because she's broke. No, Ivy vines. They'll grow down from here. They're just gonna be screwed in. Let me get some screws. I got a mark here, and it's on, what is it? 11, 11, it's right. See that? And we'll put this right in here. I like a nice workout in the morning. I long for the days when you could use a hammer, and you didn't have to use screws all the time. And here's this one, we'll line it right up, tick to tick. Look good, does that look good? Right from there, oh, move it over a little. There we go. Um, let's get it started on here first. Perfect. There we go. I don't know where 
where Joe is. <laughs> Master of illusion. <laughs> now the arbor is built and it's sitting in its holes but it's moving around. So That's we, because the holes aren't filled with anything. So we have to pack in some material. And the material that we're using is stun. Uh, uh, uh. It's marble chips. Better tasting taste because they're mine. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some down in here. But first I'm gonna lay this level over here and See, this you can fun. see that it needs to come forward. So I'm just gonna tilt this forward until it floats, and you're gonna drop the, the marble chips down in there. See, why couldn't I do this when I was a kid with the trucks? And you really do need two people for this. How's that? Hey, wait a minute. Hey, the bubble, she's afloat. She's afloat? She's afloat. It's plumb in the back, and of course, we'll pack some in the front, but the first thing we have to do is flip this around over here and make sure that it is level as well. And She's not level, right? No. Look. She's a good? She's a good. Let me step back and look at this. So now That was all my Cary Grant. Now all we have to do is drop marble chips in all, all four holes and until it's more or less I'm not going to walk in to front of you. Okay, thanks a lot. Now she's a good. We're going to finish off, put the rest of the soil in that we dug out originally, and just pack it down. Do your little Sicilian dance. <laughs> So we dug 30 inches down and half of it's filled with the marble chips and the rest, regular dirt. Now, Mr. Refinisher. Yes. How would you finish this? Like this. I'm going home with something No, actually. Very good. You could work at Disney World you now. You can. Well, you, fin you, can fin you can stain this if you want. You can paint it if you want. But I choose to let it sit and let Mother Nature take care of all the hard work by depositing lots of stuff on here called rain. <laughs> and the which, birds. Which will change it into a nice silvery gray color like uh, the silvery gray fox. Don't fire until you see the whites. That's Red Fox. Okay. Okay, now we're going to go over to the trellis. The trellis. Where's Ezekiel and Amos? I don't know, but we'll find them over here, I think. Hmm, a nice job they've done. Not bad for English. Ugh. They're over there making the trellises now. We'll have to raise that one, too. I'm sure of it. Well, what about lunch? I'm so tired of seven sweets and seven sours. Sushi, futamaki, toro. You know what I've really been craving? A bean burrito. We'll go Dutch, though. Of course. Hey, 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 hey. Easy to hold, fun to carry. More trellises from the fabulous Brian Foster. Uh, now, it's arts and crafts style. Yeah, now this is a, a turn of the century house, as we said, in the French style, but it's got some arts and crafts angularity to it. And I course, love arts and crafts. Yeah? Yeah. Mostly crafts, though. Yeah, with the scissors and string and little bits of paper. <sighs> Gustav Stickley, the Stickley brothers, Broycroft, never mind. Now, these ordinarily can go against the house. They can be screwed or bolted or nailed right into a house, however. But you know what? This house is so old, it's 100 year old. It looks like stucco, but it's not really stucco. It's actually cement, and underneath that, there's stone, and there's sand. Come and with us, come with wanna us. You want to look, check over here, because we'll show you. Looky, looky here. Oh, look. See that? This is what we're talking about. Here's a break in the cement. See that? Wee -ho, wee -ho, wee -ho. <laughs> see that? And here's where some fell out completely. You see there's dirt, there's stone. Looks like Lon Chaney and the last car. Look at that. <laughs> the sink of trees. Big scar on the side of the house. And this is what you got in there. There's a lot of substructure under there. There's brick and there's stone. And if you bang into that, you're going to make big holes like that. And we're not going to do that. So we're going to stake our claim right back around the corner it's here. It also now means follow us back we're going to get done faster. Exactly. What's that? It's a chip on my shoulder. <laughs> Here we have the trellis, and we're going to stain it, aren't we? We're yes, going we to, are. Yes, two ways to finish. There are. There are indeed. And if you could walk that way, you, you wouldn't, wouldn't need, need the talcum. Okay. Well, I need that for the gloves. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this is a stain. It's an oil-based stain. No, it's not. It's paint. Well, it's paint. I'm going to make a stain, which is right. what a stain is. What is a stain? A stain is a paint that's been thinned down, all right? Do tell. Then this is what it is. And we're using Heritage Village Colors. That's made by the Griffin Company. That's what the paint is on all the windows around here. And, you know, we're originally going to stain this. And here, make a stain. Here's what you do. You put a little bit of paint My in there. My cat knows how to make a See stain. See that? Give me the paint thinner, please. Mm -hmm. Take a paint thinner. 
You put a paint thinner in there. And that's a stain. A stain is a thinned paint. That's all you got. That's a stain with a paint. And a paint with a thinner and is a stain. And now, let's see, look at this. Mixed it up with a brush. Was that a nylon brush? Can of you give me a clump is. of paper towels? Now One. you put this on. I thought you were going to deposit the whole wall. All I need is two pieces like this. Look, now you dip this in and you just apply it. See, like that? And that will sink into the wood because we don't really necessarily. Yeah. Let's just put it on the stake we're going to use. Now mm -hmm. here, that's a stain. Now if we take this and we move over here. Follow him, cameras. And we show it up here. See, I don't think it looks too good myself. If, if I was the owner of this house, I wouldn't want this sitting next to that. Hey, the owner of the house, he owns the paint company. Okay. Back here. So we can paint it on it, which is what I think we're going to do. I don't want to stain it. Of course, I'm the boss here, and he just makes the paint. So I'm going to put some regular paint in I'll here. I'll get this right out of your way. And take this, and we'll just apply this. This is a nice, thick, rich paint, and it dries with a nice luster. Make sure when you paint something like this, especially if it's outside, you get all those edges. Because the paint is going to protect it. And do all because, the edges at least be, twice. Because remember, paint has hardeners. That's what makes the paint hard. And the same hardeners that makes the paint hard also help seal the wood. Oh, yes. See that? What are you doing? I fixed the drill. No, it the wasn't paint, working. The paint is almost dry. The paint? But, but we're going to pretend it is, and we're going to apply some stakes. Here's some stakes. Now, usually I like to use a Delmonico mm -hmm. or, or a strip stake, but here we're just using some regular cedar stakes. The longer mm -hmm. screws go in here because it's got to go through two cross elements. One time we used a... Uh, a real steak when we first started doing this. It was a, actually a rib ribeye, and, and Ezekiel and Amos, they, they really smacked us upside the head because <laughs> they said, not those kinds of steak, they are wrong. Uh, this is the smaller screw because it just goes through one cross element. Boy, it got nice out. It did, look. Want to shoot some hoops? I can't find the ball. Come on, we'll, we'll go, find go it. Let's go for it anyway. Maybe it's around by the arbor. He could never go to thy left. Not without sneakers. <sighs> oh, the English have knocked off early. I guess it's up to us again. <sighs> but after this, perhaps a movie tonight? Not witness again. No, men in black. Now he is talking. If thee are English, use thy computer to contact us at this website. Or if thee has the urge to scribe, write us. P.O. Box 53240, Philadelphia, PA, 19105-3240. Hi. I hope this is the last thing we have to do for the English. Oh, it is. Whoa. Let them plumb it up. That's good. Because I'm in a hurry. I have a date tonight. With who? Kelly McGillis. Does he have the new Indigo Girl record? Yes. Why? You know what they say about Dutch boys. This black is slenderizing. Hey, Edgar. There you are, Ed. The work's all done. <laughs> well, that's just when I like to come in. This is Edgar David of David Brothers Landscape Services, and you've just put in some beautiful, uh, what kind of vines are these? Well, this is an Aristolotia, or a Dutchman's Pipe, a commonly called. A Dutchman Pipe. Uh, Amos was smoking one of them. Did you pass any guys? Oh, never mind. Never mind. And why is it called a Dutchman's Pipe? Well, it's got a beautiful purple flower that mm -hmm. looks much like an old Dutchman's Pipe. It's really spectacular. Cool. Now, when I think about uh, a vine like this or any kind of climate, Climbing vine, I think of ivy. That's pretty much the end of my expertise. Would you ever put ivy on a trellis like this? You'd never want to put ivy on a trellis like this. Ivy is a hold fast type of vine or a clinger. A clinger. What we really want for this kind of garden structure, when you have a structure, Ed, is yeah. one that's a twiner. Okay, so this will twine and wind its way up through the lattice work and slowly cover this nice, delicate trellis. Okay, uh, now as far as twiners, I've seen wisteria on arbor. Mm -hmm. um, would you ever put wisteria on something like this? As a fabulous vine for the mm -hmm. right situation, you need a mm -hmm. heavy, massive structure because okay. it's such a huge vine over time. It'll tear structures apart. So it'll be good for my mother-in-law. Yeah, okay. But this is a nice, delicate structure, mm -hmm. and uh, we picked this Dutchman's pipe to grow in this kind of shaded condition that we have okay. here and it will cover this nicely. Cool, now what about the trellises up by the house? Well, those little trellises on the uh, side of the house there, where we get a little bit more sunlight, mm -hmm. creates a situation that opens up a lot more opportunities. And we ended up using a clematis up there, mm -hmm. which will have a nice purple, rosy flower throughout a good bit of the growing season. 
and perfectly adapted to the uh, scale of those trellises. Cool. Now, you started this. When is it going to be all over and just ready to start to eat the people who sit here? I'd give it about two years, and I wouldn't be sitting around that long. But uh, <laughs> okay. two years, it'll uh, root the first year and then slowly start covering this up. All right. Did you ever see? go too fast because it's in the shade here. Now, what about care, upkeep? Uh, do you need to trim it back or give it a drink or something? Well, in the establishment period, you want to give a little bit of uh, water mm -hmm. during dry periods, a little bit of fertilizer in the spring is a good idea. Okay. And let this thing just kind of do its thing. You might help twine it around little pieces, you can see I've done here, just to get it started and it'll find its way up through the trellis. Great. Itself. So with a minimum amount of upkeep, it'll twine around and pretty much take your mint julep in a couple of years. That's pretty much it. The great thing about native plants, they don't need a lot of care. They can uh, do their own thing. Just help it twine up and it'll make a great garden space. Uh, the plants chosen, of course, by my buddy Edgar David of David Brothers Landscape Services. First, the trellis, the beautiful arts and crafts style trellis, which we painted uh, to match the exterior trim and staked into the ground. We got the climatis around that. And, of course, here, the beautiful, not you, the beautiful arbor <laughs> that we uh, put the Dutchman's pipe around and we didn't put any finish on it. It's going to na age naturally as you and I do. Here's the before. Oh, and the after. We're right here in the after. Okay. Uh, we're th we thanked everybody, and we want to thank you because uh, we hope we've made your uh, home and your little garden area a little nicer. Remember, my name is Ed Feldman. And I am Mrs. Norman Maine. Remember, home is nice.